Hey guys, and thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we'd really appreciate it if you would. Today we're going to take a look at this Lenovo Think System SR650 2U rack mount server. We ordered this one kind of bare bones. It does have a Xeon Silver CPU and a 32 gigabyte RAM module, but no storage capability out of the box. So we ordered a RAID card, an eight drive, two and a half inch backplane kit, Samsung SSDs for the storage array, an M2 enablement kit, and we'll add an NVMe SSD on that to run Windows. We'll look at the internal and external components of the server, and then we'll go over installing all these components as well. Let's take a look. This is a Think System SR650 2.5 inch 8 bay backplane kit from Lenovo. You can see it supports eight SAS or SATA drives. On the back is the power and internal SAS connectors. Comes with the data cables, different length power cables, and then four individual dummies, and then a four dummy so you can fill the unpopulated slots. This is a Think System RAID 538i PCIe 12 gigabyte RAID card does come with a regular bracket and a low profile bracket. We won't be using either one on this build and you'll see why soon. This is the M2 enablement kit. It says this is for a single SATA type M2 drive, but I've already tested this in another server and in this one, and it works fine for NVMe drives, so I don't know why Lenovo doesn't say that. There is a dual drive version though that's for RAID, and I bet that does only support SATA disks. These are third-party caddies for two and a half inch Lenovo servers. Had to order these separate because when you order a Lenovo drive, it'll come in a caddy, but I wanted to use these Samsung Pro 860 SSDs, so I had to order separate caddies for them. On the front of the server is a conveniently located VGA port. There are releases on both sides for the rack rails, and the rails are included. It supports up to 24 two and a half inch hard drives or 12 three and a half inch hard drives. There's a power button with indicator lights, USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 ports. On the back is the LOM slot, up to six PCIe slots depending on your riser card configuration. Gigabit ethernet, VGA, two USB 3.0 ports, and it carries up to two hot swap power supplies. This one's only populated with one. Like with most Lenovo servers, this one has a guide, tells you how to populate your RAM depending on your CPU configuration, gives you a diagram of the board. Power supply, internal RAID adapter location, M2 riser card setup, LOM adapter install, and all your PCIe slots. You can see there are no backplanes installed, and our wiring is going to go through here. There are five system fans, but there's a location for a sixth fan that you need to populate if you had a second CPU. There's our single CPU location with heatsink pre-installed, and a 32 gigabyte ECC R DIMM from Samsung pre-installed. There are motherboard NVMe connectors. And this is our power connector that's going to go to our backplane. This is where our RAID card is going to install. Of course, this is the chipset for the motherboard and an X16 with a low profile slot. These are riser slots that could populate full profile cards here and here, but we don't have any risers pre-installed. This is our M2 enablement kit location and its interface. Of course, these are the power supplies. Let's start by installing the RAID card. I've already removed the bracket. We're just going to slide it into this slot. Pull this back and it sets down and then holds that corner. Then you slide the lock to hold the other corner and now it's secured. The back plane is toolless and notice this notch here. That's going to go over a piece down there and then you can lift these two tabs in order to lock it in place. It just sits down in the bottom and then there are studs that go through the holes on the card and then these brackets hold it in place. We have to run the SAS cable to the card and that's going to run through here. First you can lift out the fan wall by pulling up on these brackets then it's going to slide out. 
we're going to use the shorter SAS cable of the two they provided. You want to start with getting it routed through all this wire management and then connect the main connector to your card. There's a brush plate here for it to go through and then you want to connect them to the back plane. They're labeled SAS1 and SAS1. This one says zero and says zero. There are three backplane power connectors here, here, and over here. They came with three different lengths of cable. We're going to use the longest one and go to this first connector. We're going to tuck it through the cable management area and the brush plate. Then we can plug it into the back plane. Now the fan assembly can go back in. You want to line up these studs with the slot here on both ends. It can be a little finicky, and of course you want to keep in mind you don't want to pinch any cables on its way down. I don't have the Samsung 980 Pro SSD yet, so we're going to use this PM991 OEM drive. You can move this bracket anywhere you'd like to accommodate different length drives. You install the drive and then pinch and move it forward to lock the drive in place. Then you can install the enablement kit into the motherboard. Installing the drives is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take out this dummy install the four port dummy. There is a clip on the bottom that clips in here. Then we've got a single dummy as well. And then we're going to populate our drives starting with zero. One. And two. The system is recognizing our RAID adapter. And you can see all three drives are being recognized by the controller. So we'll be able to make a RAID 5 array out of our three 2 tera drives. So you can see it is booting our NVMe SSD that's running Windows 10 Pro. So the M2 enablement kit does in fact support the NVMe drives, not just SATA type. I hope you guys find this video helpful and you'll see how easy it is to work on these servers. I did have to locate the kits for like the backplane and the M2 enablement as well as the RAID card and of course I purchased the drives separately as well as the caddies. So I'll include part numbers and links in the description to help you all find those parts as well. If you could go ahead and use those links, it would help support our channel. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if there's anything you want to add I didn't include, please put that in the comments as well. I'm always glad to learn something new. Thanks!